Okay, welcome back. Um, in this particular video, we're going to look at compound circuits, which have both a, a parallel component in them and a series component. So in this particular circuit, we can see we've got three globes here, A, B, and C. B and C are in parallel with each other, but they in turn are in series with globe A. And the question we wish to answer is which globe which of these three globes is the brightest when connected to this battery in this circuit? And we've got a little bit of information here about the globes. The globes are not the same as each other. Globe A is a 20 ohm resistance globe. So it's 20 ohms of resistance. Globe B is 40 ohms. And globe C is 10 ohms. So with that in mind, we wish to work out which of these globes will have the will be the brightest. Um, which means, if we wish to work out which is the brightest, we need to work out how much power is coming out of each globe. So how much power is each of these globes producing? So we need to work out the power of each globe. And you'll remember from our a couple of videos back that power is equal to VI. So what we now need to do then is to work out the voltage across each of these globes and the current through each of these globes and that will then allow us to work out the power in each of these globes. So let's see how we can go with this problem. Okay so the first thing we need to do is first recognize that even though these are in parallel with each other and it's a 24 volt battery the voltage across B and C will not be 24 volts because there's this other resistor in here as well. So really the first step is to work out well how much current is feeding this whole circuit? How much current is being delivered out of the battery? Um, and in order to do that we need to work out what the total resistance of this circuit is. So the very I think the very first step is to work out the total resistance of the circuit. And we'll do the parallel section first. And the parallel section is this section here. This is the parallel section. And so the formula is, if you remember, is 1 over RT equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. And therefore, therefore that will equal 1 over 40 plus 1 over 10 which will equal 1 over 40 plus 4 over 40, which is 5 over 40. Therefore, RT will equal 40 divided by 5, which is 8 ohms. So that's the, so all of this section here has an equivalent resistance. of 8 ohms. Now if we now add that to this resistance here, because they're in series we just add them together, so the total resistance of the circuit is going to equal 8 plus 20 which is 28 ohms. So we now know the total resistance of this circuit. Okay so what I'll now do is erase this section here and move on to the next calculation. Well now that we know the total resistance we can now work out the total current coming out of the battery. So we're going to use the global version of Ohm's law. Now Ohm's law V equals IR we're using it globally because we should work out the current coming out of the battery so I will equal V over R which will equal the battery voltage which is 24 divided by the total resistance which is 28 so 24 divided by 28 is 0.857. So it's 0.857 amps. So we now know that 0.857 amps is coming out of that 
battery. Now, all that current flows through here, down here, so it comes around here, the current flows down this part of the circuit, and all of this current flows through globe A. So in other words, globe A will have the same current flowing through it as is coming out of the battery. So we now know the current through globe A is also 0.857 amps. So now we can work out the potential difference across that globe. So looking at globe A, we now know Using, we're going to use the local version of Ohm's law. We're going to use V equals IR, but we're using the local version. So we're looking at an individual component. So the voltage across that component will equal the current through the component, which is 0 0.857, times the resistance of the component, which is 20 ohms. So 0 0.857 times 20 is 17.14 ohms. Sorry, 17.14 volts. So we now know that the voltage across this globe here is 17.14 volts. Okay, now, because we now know that the voltage drop across here is 17.14, we can now work out the voltage drop across the rest. Now let's think about this. Remember, as the coulombs of charge come out of the battery, each coulomb has 24 joules of energy. So they're at a potential of 24 volts. 24 volts here, 24 volts here, 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 and there are 24 volts here. When they pass through this globe, they are going to transform 17.14 joules of energy into light and heat. So by the time each coulomb gets to the other side of that globe, they are going to be down by 17.14 volts. So the voltage at this point will be 24 take away 17.14. And that will equal 6.86. So that's the potential, the electrical potential at that part of the circuit. Let's just double check that. So 24 taking away 17.14 um, is, yep, that's 6.86 volts. That's correct. Now, as these coulombs now pass through our parallel section, some will go this way, some will go that way. But what we do know is by the time they recombine back here at this side, they will both be at zero because there is no more resistors in the circuit. They must be zero volts at this point here. So that means the voltage across globe C, if, there it's, if it's 6.86 here, and it's also 6.86 here, remember this is not current, this is voltage. They're all at the same potential until they pass through the resistor. So the voltage across this globe will be 6.86 take away zero, so it'll be 6.86 volts across there, and likewise here. So both of these globes will have a voltage across them of 6.86 volts. So now we can complete our calculation. Because now we can work out the current through globe B and globe C. So let's look at globe B first. Globe B. We're using the local version of Ohm's law now. We want 
I equals V over R, that's, that's Ohm's law, and we're using it locally because we're using, looking at an individual component. So the current through globe B will be the voltage across globe B, which is 6.86 volts, divided by the resistance of globe B, which is 40 ohms. So 6.86 divided by 40 equals 0 0.1715. So that's the current through globe B. If we now look at globe C, The current through globe C, using the same calculation, will be its voltage, which is 6.86. Remember, they're parallel, so they have the same voltage across them, divided by the resistance of globe C, which is 10, which is going to be 0.686 amps. Okay, so now let's summarize the information. We know that for globe A, we know that they're, they're their resistances, we know that their voltages, and I'll do the voltages in um, green, no, the voltages in yellow actually. The voltages are, across globe A, it's 17.14, so it's 17.14 volts. Across globe B, it's 6.86. And across globe C, it's also 6.86. Now let's draw in the currents that we know. I'll do that in a different color. I'll do that in um, orange. The currents through each of the globes, well, globe A had the same current as the current coming out of the battery, so it's 0.857 amps. So it's 0.857 amps. Globe B, the current was 0.1715. amps and finally for globe C the current through that globe was 0.686 amps okay so now we know the resistance of each globe we know the current through each globe and we know the voltage across each globe well now we can very simply use our power formula to work out the power at each globe so the power We'll go back to white. The power of globe A will equal the voltage of globe A across globe A times the current through it. So that will equal the voltage across globe A is 17.14. And the current is 0.857. So 17.14. times 0.857 equals 14.689 and that is measured in watts okay the power across globe B will equal VI but in this case it's going to be the voltage across globe B which is 6.86 multiplied by the current flowing through it, which was 0.1715. So if we do that calculation, we find that equals 1.17. Six. And finally for globe C, the power of globe C will be the voltage across it times the current through it. So it will be 6.86 also, that's the voltage across it, and the current through it is actually 0.686 amps. 
So 6.86 times 0.686 equals 4.705 or 0 0.706 in fact watts. So now we can clearly see that if you look at our power ratings, the power of globe A, 14, basically 14.7 watts. So that will be really, really bright. Power of B is 1.176 watts, so that's going to be much, much fainter. And the power at C is even less again, so it's less than 1 watt, so that will be really, really faint. So we've just used a calculation to now see and determine which of these globes is the brightest and in fact the, the order of brightness of those globes. Okay, so if I now clear that and go to a slightly different problem, in this case, I want to ask the question, what's going to happen now if there's a break in the circuit here? Now, I want to leave this for you to investigate, but what I want you to think about is this. If there's a break in the circuit here, that means current can no longer flow through this leg of the circuit. So, in other words, it is, it is now if this is now gone. So... I'll just remove that. So if there's a break in that circuit, that means that leg is no longer functioning. And so now it becomes a series circuit with just A and B. So this is now a problem where globe A, we know that's 20 ohms. Globe B, we know is 40 ohms. And globe C doesn't even fit into the picture. So to see how you would go, see if you can now work out the power of globe A and the, the power of globe B. Remember, you will need to, because you've changed the, the conditions of the circuit, you will need to recalculate the current coming out of the battery. It will no longer be the same because you've effectively removed one of the globes from the circuit. So the current coming out of the battery will be the same. The total resistance of the circuit will now be different as well. Now the total, the, the total resistance of the circuit will be simply those two resistors added together, which is going to be 60 ohms. Um, so you can see, if you've, you should be able to now see which of those globes will um, glow the brightest and do the calculation. The third thing I would like to do with you guys is, if I clear that, is this problem here. Let's say now we've got a complex circuit like this. And this is called a network. And let's imagine we could, these are terminals that we connect to a battery if we wanted to. So we connect that to a battery. like that. And the question is, we want to work out how much current is going to be drawn from this battery in this circuit if we connect the battery to it. How much current will be drawn? How much current is going to come out of the battery? Well, in order to do that, we would need to know the effective resistance of this circuit. Now, I'm going to show you, this is quite complex because you'll notice that there's quite a few branches here. I'm going to show you a way of redrawing this circuit so that it allows you now to clearly work out or gives you at least a, a method of working out the total resistance of this circuit. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to redraw it, but in a slightly different way. Um, I'm going to, in fact, 
um, try or attempt to grab this circuit and then move it to there that's good okay okay so oops I'll get rid of that okay so now what I want to do I want to trace this circuit and redraw it in a more rectangular fashion so let me show you what I mean I'm going to use yellow so I'm going to track the circuit starting at A I'm going to draw across the, around the circuit like this I'm just tracing the circuit now look at this I've now reached a junction I'm going to call that junction A and at junction A there's two forks in the road and I'll call those 1 and 2 Okay, so I'm now going to redraw this down here. So starting at A, I'm now going to draw a straight line. That's sorry, that's a bigger pardon. That's that A there. At junction A, which is here, maybe to avoid confusion, what I'll do, I'll make that lowercase a. So here's our junction A. And there's two ways it can go, but notice I'm drawing it this way. I'm drawing it, there's path one and there's path two. Now path one goes to a 10 ohm resistor. So now I'm gonna draw in my 10 ohm resistor there. That's my 10 ohm resistor. Path two goes to a 20 ohm resistor. Now that means we can already see that these two, these two resistors are in parallel with each other. That wasn't necessarily obvious in this diagram. So let's continue. So we've drawn that branch and that resistor. We've drawn this branch and this resistor. So we've already taken care of that. Let's now continue. Now if we continue from the 10 ohm resistor, let's continue this way. Guess what? We reach, we reach another branch. I'm going to call that little b. So continuing from our 10, I reach another point, I'll call that B, and that's now another fork in the road. So I can now go two ways again. I'm going to call those directions, and go this way, I'll call that direction 3, I'll go this way, I'll call that direction 4. Okay, so there's 3, and there's 4. If I go to along 3, that takes me to the 20 ohm resistor. So I'm going to draw my 20 ohm resistor in there. And if I go along 4, sorry, I'll just draw that in like this. If I go along um, path 4, I go through a 10 ohm resistor. So that's my 10 ohm resistor. Okay, so that's, we can see that those two resistors are now in parallel. Let's now continue our journey. Now, continuing on path 4, I come to another junction. And that actually takes me all the way back to the end of the circuit. So path B, after the 10 ohm resistor, I go all the way back to the beginning. So I'll go around. That goes all the way back. to the end of the circuit, and I'll call that capital B. Now, if I look at this part of the circuit here, this here, that's a continuation of number two. Number two also goes all the way back to the circuit. So I can link that. That can join anywhere along here, because that can join there or could join there. It doesn't really matter where it joins. Anywhere along this final link. So I'm just going to take that over to here. Okay, because now it's in it's connected to the now the final leg of the of the circuit. So that junction there, we'll call these we'll name these junctions, that's junction C. And those two junctions could be the same as well. I mean that that effectively that, that could have been drawn like that as well. So basically the 10 ohm and the 20 ohm resistor both connect to the same piece of wire 
which goes back to the beginning of the circuit like this. Okay. Now this one here, this, because there's no connection here at all, that's acting like an infinite resistor, infinite. So the resistance there is infinite. But it's in parallel with that. It's in sorry, it's in series with the 20 ohm. So it's like there's another resistor in series with the 20 ohm, which is infinite. And that will then also connect back to the beginning of our circuit. So let's just retrace our, our steps here. Let's look at path, this is the path here. A through the 10 ohm, through the 10 ohm, reaching junction B, there's junction B. Now it can either go through the 10 ohm and then go back to the beginning. So 10 ohm back to the beginning without going through any other resistors. Or I can go through the 20 ohm and then the infinite resistor and then back to the beginning. 20, infinite, back to the beginning. Alternatively, I can go down path two, which goes to the 20 ohm resistor and then links on and goes back to the beginning without going through any other resistors. So there's my circuit redrawn. So I can now, because I can now see which is in parallel, which is in series, I can now do my calculation to work out the total resistance. For example, I know that those two there, they're in series. Now, 20 plus infinity is still infinity. So that is effectively, that section there is actually equivalent to a resistance which is infinite. So I could then replace that therefore with one resistor which is infinite and that's what I'm going to do now. So now to make clear to you, I'm now going to redraw that as one single resistor that is infinite. Now, these two are in parallel. So I'm going to change, change colour to a um, blue, I think. So these two are in parallel with each other. So, to, pardon me, to work out the total effective resistance of this section, I'm going to use my parallel formula, 1 over RT equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Well, R1, I'm going to call that the infinity resistance, that's 1 over infinity plus 1 over 10. Now, 1 over infinity, 1 over infinity is virtually 0. So it's 0 plus 1 tenth. So 1 over RT equals 0 plus 1 over 1 tenth, plus 1 tenth, which is 1 tenth. Therefore, the total resistance of this section is actually RT equals 10 ohms. So I can now replace this whole section, this whole section here, with a single resistor, which is 10 ohms. So as we do this, you can see how the circuit's becoming simpler and simpler. Now, you should be able to finish off this problem and you notice that these two are in series and that of course these two are then in parallel with this 20 ohm. So you should be able, now be able to work out the final total resistance of this circuit and to give you a heads up the total resistance the final total resistance of this circuit is actually 10 ohms so you now need to see if you can finish that problem and get the answer of 10 ohms okay so that includes our initial series of videos on on electric circuits so i hope they've been helpful and um, i will talk to you soon bye